And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Talia Lissandra. We are going to be trying some of the landmarks this time with Countdown. Uh, we haven't really been doing that with our Talia decks, so this is going to be kind of different is trying all the Countdown landmarks. Um, mostly Frozen Thrall. This is going to be the most important landmark in our deck, Frozen Thrall, um, you know, for the Countdown 8, uh, so that whenever it uh, finishes the Countdown, then you get the 8-8 eight, eight Overwhelm. Of course, those eight drops are important for leveling up Lissandra, um, but then we're going to have a lot of ways to reduce the cost on time. Well, not a lot, but we have a few. So we have Clockwork Curator in here to advance them down two rounds. Plus, if we're going to have Draclor Inquisitor with our Frozen Thralls, so that um, if it's just at four or less, then we just advance it to zero. So that's going to kind of be our important thing to do. Now we're playing like stone weaving in here. It says, look at three random landmarks that you can afford. You pick one of them to create in hand. So if you have exactly one mana left when you play stone weaving, you'll look at all the, the one cost landmarks. And there's three of them. There's frozen thrall, there's ancient preparations, and there's buried sun disk. And so um, you'll be able to grab frozen thrall with that. So we want, um, we want like even like on turn two, we want to be able to play stone weaving and only have one mana left. Now that means we would, would have had to spend one mana. Hopefully that was with Frozen Thrall on turn one. But if not, that's why we're also playing Imagined Possibilities, which can advance landmarks one round. But then also we could just play it on turn two, create the uh, random landmark with Countdown in hand, and now we have two mana, and now our Stone Weaving gets Frozen Thrall. Um, oh, you can't even grab Sun Disk? Oh, well, how about that? <laughs> I didn't even know. That's weird that's not in the Stone the stone weaving pool, but yeah, so um, we'll definitely get it at that point. Uh, but yeah, so that's going to be kind of our deck, though. It's going to be all about frozen thralls, making a bunch of 8-8s, eight and we'll see how that does. We'll have Talia be able to copy um, a landmark that has uh, that's almost going to be expired, you know, with like a real low countdown. And then we got this clock hand. We got a new uh, top end card that I haven't tried yet. Um, Eight mana, four, seven. Whenever I'm summoned, you create two of these instant sentries in hand. That they're not fleeting. That's cool, but they're focused. So you can either summon a random landmark with countdown. So that summon, that means that they go, it goes immediately in play. Or you can advance a landmark four rounds. And so with two of those, you know, could advance something eight rounds. You can um, get an eight, eight to go alongside the clock hand. All right, but let's give it a try. This is going to be interesting as we continue to try to find more good uh, Talia lists, or a good Talia list. <laughs> we'll see if this is it. Ooh, playing against some deep. All right, so let's see if we can get some thralls. All right, no thralls. I think I'm just gonna mulligan everything. I guess we could keep Lissandra, or we could, could maybe keep Draclorn. All right, so Gamma, the person who donated the deck, says I would just keep Lissandra in this hand. All right, so we'll keep Lissandra. Yeah, Frozen, frozen Thrall. We did it. Frozen Thrall. All right, so first Frozen Thrall. I think I'm going to wait on the Clockwork Curator. I don't think we necessarily need to play it immediately. Nothing escapes my watch. We can have it be a little bit more of a surprise tool. If I'm going to have something just trade with the 2-1 anyway, I'd rather be the Sentry and draw another card. For the homestead. Okay, Gamma says the Draclorn's not as important as it was before this previous expansion. It would still be a very good card to, to find for what our hand looks like. I will bury the world in ice. So this could definitely be too greedy because this could be Jaw Hunters. Uh, how they just passed right there. Cool, not Jaw Hunters. But of course with the with the Frozen Thralls, you gotta play them as early as possible, right? So it's not really like you wait on your Lissandra because you gotta get those things out there and be able to play them. So an atrocity's gone. These old eyes. 
I still see far and clear. Not sure what to do with this character yet. We're gonna do so much tossing. I guess time is on our side with, with the countdowns. Look out for reavers! Ready the torches! All right, two atrocities gone. I can't imagine they're playing a third atrocity. Alert the villains. Light the signal fires. Man, I don't know what to do. I guess I'm playing this thing. about to go deep. We had a very good deep hand. Feel the power of true ice. Going deep on turn five. So our next time that we attack, we're gonna be able to have we're gonna have these eight eights to be able to attack with. No, I'll say freeze for all their their huge deep things. That would have been cool if they would have played the, um, that other landmark, <laughs> like, like the deep landmark. Yeah, so I'm thinking Frozen Thrall, Naturalist. History is whatever. I guess I just didn't need to do the Frozen... Because... Th I was going to make the two instant centuries, it's going to make this an 8-8... Eight, eight. I guess the naturals may not even be necessary. Like, we get to attack with the watcher this round. Yes, yeah, so that naturals just wasn't necessary. I didn't I just didn't need to do any of that. So that's that's what I guess we do get the 5 4. At least they haven't played a champion. It's definitely not possibilities in open. Because, yeah, like, the, the Watcher's is going to replace this 5-4 anyway, so that was just a, a big waste. I could have had two extra mana. Oh, right, because that's focus speed. These are all focus speed, so if they have if they have the eating fish. No, I didn't think of that. Uh, yeah, I should have... Right... I, don't, I, I just wait. I wasted way too much mental power trying to talk, trying to think of like why I'm playing this two four and five four, and that's I was only thinking about that, and I wasn't even thinking about their deck at all. 
I've, I've focused way too much on that. Yeah, that was that was bad. So if I lose this, it's because of that. I, I should have a Watcher attacking right now also. I wasted way too much bra brain power on <laughs> that stupid naturalist. Were they like Vile Feast and Withering Whales? So their, their deck is only champions left. Just their three Nautilus. Okay, so first time playing a deck. You know, first game. That was rough. That was very easy to know what they were going to be doing. And I really messed that up. Now every, every round they're just going to draw Nautilus. I just don't know if they're going to attack. My best play is like they attack, I succumb, and then also play Talia. But I can't just assume they're going to attack, right? Because like if I if I just pass though and they pass, then then that's terrible for me. I don't want to preemptively succumb to the cold. So I guess the answer is just Draclorn. All will fear and love our dark lady. Fear, love. Because now they can't block with Nautilus anymore. Oh, they have eight cards left now, so they may not draw Nautilus. Right, because now because the Nautilus puts the other sea monsters back. Need that Drek Lauren. That was a great draw for them. If I stumble, I have the earth to catch me. Oh, that's a great draw for them. I need that Drek Lauren. But still, I should have had Watcher. This this game should be over. I, I messed this game up with the with by waiting an extra turn. Well good news is they can't draw any more of these. Drawing those back to back. The Desert Naturalist I played was just such a waste. Even now like a Desert Naturalist you know, like just waiting Desert Naturalist would have Helped out a whole lot more. All right, let's draw. Yeah, let's draw another one of those eight drops. Oh man, let's draw that eight drop again. Okay, we're gonna draw the eight drop and then be able to turn both of these into eight eights. Let's go eight drop. Clock hand. Oh, Lissandra's not bad, I suppose. 
Sandra will make a the Watcher. That's not bad. So yeah, Clockhand, Draclorn, Lissandra. I guess we had all those for decent draws. We know their whole deck is either to sea monsters or Nautilus. They don't have anything else left besides those. So I don't think it. So their their card in hand is a sea monster or not Nautilus, and none of those can kill us. So that should be game. Good job, Lissandra. All right, so I almost messed it up, but not quite. Oh no! Yeah, they get the sea monster or the, that with the the treasures. Oh no! You will do as I command. Okay, well it's not over. Hopefully they get the deal five damage. Nope, they get that one. Never mind. So, good lesson learned. Almost uh, messed it up with the... against the Devourer. I was way too focused on my own cards. I guess Draclorn's gonna go again, and we'll just keep Lissandra... Draclorn did look... was pretty impressive. I kind of want to keep Draclorn. I don't know, I kind of want to keep that Draclorn, but we really need turn one Frozen Thrall. Lissandra's a good blocker, being all tough and everything. And I'm saving the spell mana for Ice Shard instead of playing Preservarium. I guess that's a card. No mercy for those who desecrate our home. They will find our lands do not take well to intruders. We cannot fight the cold. In Shirima's name. Yeah, their hand isn't crazy at all. <laughs> it's not just like the three best cards and then that, you know, the one mana plus three plus one. Like, that's that's not just like the best things to have ever on turn four. Yeah, not not crazy at all. This Remember this day. So, of course, we'll lead with our other Ice Shard to try to kill both of these champions. Before they level up. Wow. Yeah, their hand isn't crazy at all or anything. My name echoes through every rock, every canyon. How many Ice Shards do we have? Three? So either play the, the Tavern Keeper to help us stay alive a little bit more, or Preservarium looking for something like that. I guess it's this. Which five drops better to play? I guess Draclorn blocks better. Well, no, it's probably got, it's got to be Talia right now because otherwise the board will be too filled for Talia. Yeah, so it's got to be Talia first. I will weave my own path. No, you will serve your emperor. Serum, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate it. 
All right. Well, my opponent's saying that I'm already, I'm already dead. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, or eight, nine, ten. Yeah, exactly. Going block three. Yeah, that that is game. Was that the best possible hand? Yes, it was. They had every single card was the best possible card they could have. Four damage, four more damage to me. Okay. All right, so we should be one and one, but I messed up the first game. All right, send it all back. Frozen Thralls. Where are you, Frozen Thrall? Hmm. No Frozen Thrall. Don't even have the other one mana card that could get us Frozen Thrall. Why am I playing that over Lissandra? I don't know. They do have this thing that would like kill my Lissandra, and that'd be a bummer. So I like this curator. Does a better job blocking these things. I waste four mana, they waste two mana, so it's kind of like they waste two less mana, but it's not, it's not that big a deal, you know, we have the countdown cards that are um, on our side. The advanced landmarks one round could be really important in a couple of turns. I mean, I guess I just take the pass. Or I just play another Draklorn. Because Lissandra, if, if I play Lissandra, then I probably have to Frostbite the Screeching Dragon right now, which I don't necessarily want to do. I don't think they're going to have Skies this time. But who knows, I could be wrong. Have any room? Still have any room? Hello, room terror. Let's rock. So we we have to play something right now because if I pass, then they just you know obviously we we can't just keep passing. And they they level up a really in soul, so I, I have to frostbite. I I don't have any any options. <sighs> this just isn't gonna work. The lady of ice and darkness. 
I do so love when my people call me that. Oh, they will shine. So they just play sharp side. I can't block that thing because, like, right now. So if I if I frostbite screeching dragon, that's seventeen twenty. That's twenty three. The gem is 24, so if I block the, the Aurelian Soul, it makes it 25, so I can't block Aurelian Soul. Um, so they, they just need any kind of pump spell um, if I do Frostbite the Screeching Dragon, and then Aurelian Soul's leveled up. My only other option is just letting this happen, Frostbiting the Eclipse Dragon. That would make sure that Aurelian Soul doesn't level up this round, but I don't know how it's not leveling up the next round. The ice is um, let him level summon Talia open attack. So you're saying do like this. Okay. All right. Well, that's I guess that's a better line than anything I got. Open attack with 3-8 power overwhelms. Yeah, I know they could have the fight spell, which would ruin this plan, but I feel like... I feel like this is just what we have to do. I feel like we have to risk it. I feel like our, our percentage chance of winning this game is not very high anyway. Like, if they, have, if they have a fight spell, they just fight next turn whenever I attack anyway, and, like, we're in a ton of trouble anyway. So, like, I, I feel like this is just what we gotta do. So obviously they have all these celestial cards that cost zero. I'm kind of expecting the uh, double obliterate. I can try to work around that somehow. So I just went ahead and did this to level up Talia. Inner Sanctum is interesting. Can we get Spell Shield Watcher? Start create that. If we pull this game out, I will be very surprised. So we're gonna go with the tough nexus. Thought about just preemptively using the um, succumb to the cold, and then dropping desert naturalist, 
and you know like so, like whenever they played like that the um whatever it's called the descend into darkness or whatever um whenever they played that thing i thought about just you know frostbiting like the great beyond or or the aurelian soul like i guess the aurelian soul would be the best thing to frostbite like frostbite that and then desert naturals can get two blockers but of course they both get challenged uh, but I felt like the, the tough Nexus was maybe more important than doing that. Because uh, just... Yes, yeah, so this would keep us alive at 2. They just played... They already played um, Sharp Sight once this round. Oh, they had Hush for the last card. That was close. We came we came close to defeating leveled up early in soul. Yeah, we, we have. We've had the craziest games have been very close. The craziest things have been happening in these games. Alright. Good. Back to Fro so game one, which I should have won, we had turn one frozen thrall. This game we have turn one frozen thrall again. I like it. I'm gonna keep Draclorn. Draclorn's been awesome. Yeah, I definitely need some practice with this deck for sure. This is a hard one just to pick up and pilot, as you've seen. Um, but we should be one and two at the very least. Yeah, two incredibly close games and then the best Azir Aurelia hand you can dream of. All right, Merciless Hunter still broken. Secrets hidden by frost. Can you get more of these things out there? Pride was my end, as it will be yours. A patrician, I became a soldier. It is time for you to prove yourself, my warrior. I dare not serve any other, my lady. To ruin. Love it. I was a good even block Swain. Could have dealt six more damage to me. Draclorn scared him. Obviously, that's going to be Culling Strike. It's gonna do it. Frozen Thrall aggro. We are gonna have another Draculor in the next round. We should do this more often. Could be two and two, but we'll take we'll be one and three. Okay, so there's no way our opponent has as good a hand as the last Aurelia Azir opponent. That hand was ridiculous. Alright, send it all back. We haven't seen so we are we're playing three copies of the stone weaving card. And throughout all of these games, um, we haven't seen a single one of those stone weaving cards yet. Not a single one in five long games. My name will echo through the ages. I still get to attack with this thing. It's going to be 3-3. Three, three. 
So I can block with Tavern Keeper on that, but I don't know if I want to. Do you want to guarantee that we get Frozen Thrall again? That's not worth it. Warm hearts and hot soup. I guess we're probably, we're probably going to want to advance one round with this. But... The question is, is do I want a Stone Weaving right now and then, and then we get one and then... Like, do I want a Stone Weaving and play Frozen Thrall? Um, I guess that answer is no. Yeah, no, because I, I think I want the mana, so I, I think I want to Ice Shard plus Talia next round. Time for a leap of faith. That doesn't seem remotely fair. Um, no, Deep's just fine. I don't think it's really that that strong. I think it's just fine. Fall in the shoulders. Tell the people what you have seen today. No, we need we need, I need this I need to be able to play both of these things, Ice Shard and Talia. This round. I will weave my own path. No, you will serve your emperor. If only I had two of these imagine possibilities, that'd be pretty nice. Man, because if I let them have this, then they get to play the Flawless Duet and replay this Ribbon Dancer. Attack twice with both of those. Road eventually. I can't. That kills one of my blockers, though. And they still have three mana. I really hope they don't have any more Ribbon Dancers. Just do a normal attack and pass it around. Together, we are part of something more. Together, you are children of Sharima. Specs a little busted. You're ruining everything. Still obviously very lethal. Yeah, I said I should have played the, the Conley Tamer Keeper on turn three to be able to block that sparring student. Doesn't really matter, I don't think. Still, still would have taken all the same amounts of damage. That deck's just a little, little too good for us. Uh, so we did finally draw that stone weaving for the first time. That fifth game, we never saw a blighted ravine. So it's like, yeah, you could have av like imagine if blighted ravine was avalanche, it still wouldn't matter. We never actually drew a blighted ravine in any game. Actually, we did see one one time that we mulliganed away against deep. It was in our opener against deep, and we mulliganed it away. That was the only time we saw that card. I really like the clock hand. The clock hand looked great, especially with Lissandra, you know, because it, it's also just an eight dropped for Lissandra. Um, I know we went one and four here, but of course I'll say it again. It should have been two and three. I, I just messed up the, the first game. Um, as y'all know, so it should have been two and three. Um, forgot about Devour Adepts. And just all my things being focus speed, you know, I, I was thinking my things were burst speed that like they play something I respond, but all my stuff's focus speed like that. That's why I really messed up that first game in my mind. I was thinking it was burst. I could respond, but it's focused. I couldn't respond. And so that's that that messed me up. The first game was I thought this. Yeah. So it took, you know, it was game one playing the new card, like playing this new card. And I just I just had it in my mind wrong that it was burst, not focus. Um, but anyway, uh, I think. Our deck performed pretty decently, you know, as far as Italia deck goes. I think I think we're on the right track here. I think it's going to just keep on taking some more time to kind of to tune it. But obviously, that is zero really. I don't know exactly what you really do about that. That's why like the one Desert Naturalist is in here to deal to, to be able to blow up the landmark that Azir plays, or also just get like an extra five four for blocking. But I don't know if there's really like anything you can can do about that deck. You know, maybe you know maybe Avalanche is also. 
you know, so maybe you just play, you know, ravines and avalanches and ice shards, but none of those actually kill Azir or their landmark, um, or they still just blade dance and everything. I, I don't know if, <laughs> I don't know if that matchup's even winnable, to be honest. Um, I don't think that the, no, I don't think you need any extra copies of Thrall than what you have. Uh, we saw that the board space is certainly a problem at times, but that's just how it is with the landmarks. But like Lysandra, Draclor, and Talia, all these, these things being two spaces does become a problem at times. Which there was more things that advanced the allied landmark down that were playable. The Curator was really good. Like, advancing them down was really good. The problem is time in the bottle is just not playable. Um, from playing against these kind of decks a lot, time in the bottle is not worth a card. I, I would not recommend playing playing that. Preservationist, though, is... Um, that's enticing. Like, this, this looks good. Advance and Allied Landmark three rounds. Like, that's awesome. Like, to go with Curator. And so at first thought, it's like, wow, pres Preservationist looks great in here. Because as we saw with those games, like, that that could be pretty awesome. The problem with Preservationist, though, is it costs five mana. And we already have Talia and Draclorn at five mana. Um, I really wish this was, like, four mana, right? Like, I wish this was, like, a four mana 3-3 three, three, um, that still did this. So it could just fit on the curve somewhere. Or, or even two mana or three mana, right? If it was like two, three, or four mana, um, and even if it would, you know, did even if it just did two rounds and co and cost three mana, if it was like a three mana three three, that's two rounds. I'd be all about it. We'd be putting it in here also. Um, it's hard to fit it in though, um, but maybe that's the thing to do. Maybe you just got to play this um, and just get more more advance in there because our you know our deck is just that focused on the thralls i just i just don't think time in the bottle is very good um is time in the bottle better than imagine possibilities i guess possibly but probably not one mana versus two all your landmarks but it's just one round but one landmark two rounds of course the possibilities help out the stone weaving though we know ne we never got to show that off but i talked about that at the beginning Okay, but there we go. Um, that's going to be it here for Talia Lissandra. Um, somebody says, you could probably justify Preservationist if you were playing like Triple Promising Future. I could see that, if that's like the goal. And then you'd you'd really load up on your Futures and Talias that kind of do the same thing and then advance at three rounds. But, oh, well, that was fun. That was Talia Lissandra. All right, so those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, as always, feel free to leave the comments. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed the games. We had some crazy games. That game one, the game three, uh, they were crazy, crazy close. Uh, the game four was really good, too. So hopefully, y'all enjoyed those. Uh, but that's going to be it here for Talia Lissandra. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.